money, Jordan Bell fur. Stacking penny stocks while I'm flipping these birds. Sipping on Ciroc, trip them up with the words. I done popped the molly and I think it's be my third. What is going on, DJ Nation? Kenny Kim here bringing you another Fantasy Golf Generates podcast this week for the Amex. As usual, I am here with my partner in crime, everybody's favorite Canadian, the GPP Grandmaster, Tyler Tambolee. Tyler, what is up, my friend? I don't know if that title is going to stick very long if I keep having weeks like this. We'll, we'll talk about it. Last week, not the best for me. You know, it's tough when Kim, M do that stuff. Spieth, I was not on, but that was something else. We'll talk there in a second as well. But as always, before we get into it, I want to remind everyone very quickly, this show is brought to you and presented by Prize Picks. Head on over to prizepicks.com. Use promo code MMN. Get yourself 100% deposit bonus up to your first 100 bucks. Lots of picks over there you can do. Pick them DFS. Lots of ways. Pick more or less. Set them up. Parlays. Everything. Check out prizepicks.com. Use promo code MMN when, to get yourself yeah. started. Go ahead. If you're, if you're a prop fan, it's yeah. a must go to. Make sure uh, you go to prizepicks.com. Uh, use our promo code. Go ahead and check the site out. Really great for prop bets. Go ahead and bet on the Monday night game tonight. I don't know if people are going to hear this before the Monday night game tonight, but bet on something on price. It's a cool site, especially if you love prop bets. Tam, we keep going. No, I was just going to say that. That's We want to kick it back to you, Kenny. We got Siwoo Kim. Got the job done. I know there was a lot of Siwoo tickets out there. There was a lot of Buckley tickets out there that, I, you know, I was sweating with those folks because you always want the long shot. Kind of want to see him get through, have a good start to the season. I mean, it's still a great start, second place, but a uh, wild event when your bo- leaderboard is Siwoo, Buckley, Kirk, Putnam, Lipsky, Ben Taylor. Like, it, it was pretty wild the way the week went. And then, of course, can't forget, like I said, Jordan Spieth, Tom Kim, Sung J M, all those guys, Kenny. So give us your thoughts on the tournament, the Sony Open, what it was. Oh, it was nice seeing a Korean win. I mean, you look at the leaderboard on Sunday, it wasn't the greatest, but it was still a pretty fun watch. Uh, you know, I, everyone was tight. Everyone was bunched up. No one really wanted to make a move. Uh, you know, Buckley had his chances, but he bogey. Then he birdied the next hole. Then he bogey. Then he birdied the next hole. Uh, it's sort of the way uh, Buckley's day went. Uh, and then Siwoo just came in, you know, played well. No mistakes throughout. Um, and then, you know, at the end, he came through clutch with that birdie, with that chip in on 17 and an amazing uh, fairway bunker shot on 18 to go ahead and get that birdie uh, for his fourth victory. Uh, crazy thing is, stat I heard on Siwoo, he has been inside the top five going into Sunday eight times. He's won four. That's yeah. not bad. I'm not saying he's been in the lead. I'm saying he was top five going into Sunday. Yesterday was his eighth time that happened, or two days ago. Was the eighth time that happened, he's won four times. So I I wish I'd known that, like, you know, on Saturday, so I could have put the live bet on him. Uh, But I I, I got that that stat on Twitter on Sunday, so it was too late, uh, Sunday night. Uh, So next time you see Siwoo inside the top five, going into Sunday, Maybe want to put a live bet on them. Uh, something to think about. Yeah, it was a pretty crazy week. A good week for me. Cash game cornerstones didn't like place well. Uh, but you know, I went three of four in a week where I think six percent went six of six. Uh, and then I had uh Griffin, so it was a so the only miscut was Sung Jay. Uh, and then the other three cash game cornerstones all made the cut, and then I had Griffin who played well. Uh, as as my fifth play, and then I had Svensson, who I got extremely lucky. Uh, the golf gods were in my favor yeah. after the Morikawa shit uh, last week, where Svensson was two outside the cut line going into 16, hits a hole in one uh, to, to reach the cut line, and then pars out 17 and 18 for him to make the cut, to give me five of six, to give me an easy weekend. No sweat, no worry. It was going to be a, a winning weekend. Had uh, about, I think, I think Siwoo was around 8%, 9%, somewhere around there. In, in GPPs, I had him uh, over 20%. So uh, it wasn't the greatest week in GPPs. Uh, I got back like two-thirds of my GPP money, which is fine. That's actually yeah. pretty good, especially when you win in cash. Uh, because you, if I win in cash, you know, if I that's all profit, basically, whatever happens in GPPs. So uh, it worked out well. Not great in the gambling week. Uh, went over my budget for like the first time in forever. 
probably because I was still tilted over Morikawa. I had two live bets, both uh, at Spawn and uh, Montgomery. Uh, they did not pan out, plus a card I had, which is already large. Uh, so I've got to make sure not to do that again, even though my card is large again. It's got to stay away from the live betting uh, this week. Uh, but uh, it was a fun watch. It was entertaining. The one thing I really liked about the course, you notice the difference. The rough being up was noticeable. Mm-hmm. It was also very, very firm. Uh, the fairways especially uh, were very, very firm. I mean, uh, you know, usually you get like, you know, low 20s under par uh, to win this event, but you got 17, 16 under, um, you know, only a handful of guys, double digit under par. I mean, maybe like 20 or 30, uh, you know, instead of, you know, sometimes we've been seeing 40 or 50 uh, in that range on these easier courses. It's amazing what those little nuances to the courses that we see can really make it a little bit more difficult and make it a little bit more fun to watch. Um, I know we want to see birdies. I know we want to see uh, all that, but you know, it, it wasn't like they were struggling, but they had to play well. Like if you weren't playing, it's it, it seemed like a golf course where if you were playing well, you could score well. If you were playing awful, you could. If you were playing just below average, okay, just below average, you probably couldn't keep up uh, because um, how d- the course was definitely a little bit more difficult than it normally was, and I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was a fun watch. Uh, probably not what we're going to see this week. Uh, but still, it was a fun watch last week and, and a winning week, Tambo. Yeah, uh, I anyway. thought it was, you know, solid. The, 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 the setup down the stretch was awesome. I mean, I, I don't – no one will vouch for this, and I know she's my wife, so she would say this and, and stick up for me. But I did say to my wife, as Siwoo was going up and they kept talking about his lie on that chip, I said, he's going to chip this in. It just – I've seen it. I He's good with it. It, it just looked like he was going to chip it in. The ball was sitting there perfectly. He goes right at it, and it drops in. And she's like, holy shit, like how – I was like, you just, you just watch a lot of golf. You see that shit. And then I was like, I feel bad for Buckley now because you just see it as it's shaking out, what's going to happen. And I know he missed that three footer, but that's all like the variance of it. He missed the three footer. Then he goes back and makes like a crazy 18 footer on the next yeah. thing he needed. Like little yeah. things like that. That just all goes back and forth. If this, then that butterfly effect, I was talking about it, but like, I mean, that's fine. He just did what he had to do it and it just didn't work out. I mean, he didn't make every shot down the stretch. He wishes he did better. I'm sure. But it's still a great, great start for the season for a guy like him. So awesome to see you're going to be keeping an eye on him. Putnam got the each way. That was the only bet I won last week. So it doesn't get close to getting even on that. But that was nice to hit. I mean, he was in the mix for sure. Lipsky, who, if you remember, Kenny, I took in the draft, the uh, my sixth pick in the Mayo draft that we did the season long, Lipsky. So good to see him back and playing well. He's here again this week. We'll talk about him. I don't know, the Canadian Nick Taylor. There, there wasn't much. I guess for me, the bigger thing, DFS perspective and DFS wise was the fact that, again, the guys all missed the cut up top. You just have to remember that. We'll talk about it with some strategy going in for this week, but my at my own fault, take the L. Like, when you looked at last week, I kept saying this. You see Sungjae, Tom Kim, you see Hideki, and Speed, And then you see behind them Henley, Harmon, Connors, T- T- Taylor Montgomery, and you say, okay, I get it, but it does feel like those 10K guys are a little, at least a tier above. And probably are long term and on paper and all yeah, that. But it I'm didn't work this past week, but I don't think they were a wrong place. Yeah, it's not that. I mean, I'll never have that hindsight. It's just thinking back and looking at it. Like I, I played the two up top. I played Kim and M is what I settled on. The majority of those two didn't play speed. Um, no, like almost no Hideki. So I, I mainly focused on those two at the top. And then I went on those nine K guys. But I just had wished when you think of it back now, not even like the results to get the winner. We all wish we could go back and play it differently. I'm just saying when you think of it. When I really dug into this week, which we'll get to here in a second, it's like this week, the upper class is actually the upper tier. Like it's Rom, it's Scheffler, it's Finau, it's Cantley. And then you drop down to Putnam, Hoagie, K.H. Lee, Hadwin. Could they beat them? Sure. But that to me is like a real tier drop off. Last week, there was definitely a spot where those guys didn't come through a plotter's course, shorter track, not all the par fives, not needing all the driving distance, et cetera, et cetera that I think was just wrong. And like I said, I'll take the L for sure. I'm thinking like that upper tier was that much better. They are on paper, big names compare but not really when you think back to it. So I don't know if that came across the right way. I'm the one taking the L. I just think in general, you got to look at it from that perspective because when I look at this week, Kenny, I think of this more of like the RBC Canadian open of last year, where it was like, there was five or six guys up top here. There's, you can call it seven or eight. We'll talk about them, but there's an upper tier and what ended up happening at the RBC Canadian open. I remember it was a live weekend and everyone's like PGA couldn't ask for a better setup because we've got Rory JT and Finau 
going off in the final round down the stretch to find out who wins this thing and going down to the final shot, everything like that. So I think we could see that again this week. No surprise, but just a, a difference, a stark difference of comparison of week over week, what we see out here on the PGA tour. I, I don't know if you want to talk about that too, because I know Kyle Porter brought that up about how it's kind of like such a difference in what we saw the week before last to this week. But I mean, that to me is how it's always going to be like, that's just what you're going to see. We're, we're getting a better field at the Amex this week. I don't know your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, the field wasn't bad last week. I mean, uh, the thing is, you know, we're, we're going to have some poor field. I think there's one coming up here soon uh, that we're not going to see hardly anybody, uh, you know, in, in the top 20. Yes, Pebble. Uh, I don't think we'll see anybody in the top 20. Uh, maybe maybe a couple of guys. Uh, those are the ones that I worry about. But you got like seven guys in the top 20, 25. Yeah. Hey, that's good enough. This uh, is yeah, good. Yeah. Then you got yeah, Farmers is yeah. good. Then you yeah. got Pebble. Okay, we get a week off. Pebble, a week yeah. off. We don't care. We're grinding yeah. and doing it anyway. Yeah. But then you go to the week after, and it's the waste management where yeah. we're going to have even Rory is going to be there this year or should be uh, based yeah. on him missing the first designated event. So just little things like that. We're going to have these weeks in between. It definitely does show a difference that it was a different point he was proving anyway. I just thought in general, many people were talking about it on Twitter of how it's like not the same and such a miss where we don't have anyone at this event and it makes it tough on Sunday. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what's going to spark golf ratings maybe it will be the documentary that we already talked about that, that's a big deal that's going to be a big deal uh i know wiley and adam lack are going to be doing a um andy uh, lack andy lack andy lack oh, okay sorry. i thought you were going to say because adam chernoff no, also was no, talking about no. and andy lack sorry had. andy lack and wiley are going to be doing a uh, episode by episode breakdown uh, of the show on andy's podcast uh andy if you're listening i would love to be a guest on one of those episodes uh, because I will definitely be watching that. Don't, don't you think uh, they're so. going to just drop the whole show though? Like I'm going to binge it. Yeah, the they're going to drop the whole show, out. but I mean like, you know, like, you know, they have all those podcasts now for like Game of Thrones, uh, House of Dragon, all this stuff that goes just by episode by episode. It's fine. You can, you can knock it all out in a week. Um, I'm actually going to take the day off and I'm going to watch it all February 13th. I will be watching it immediately, uh, res- yeah, like yeah. straight through it. Don't matter. Yeah. And that's why when I, I wake up, when I wake up at like seven in the morning that day, I will watch it. I already requested it off. Uh, that's what I'm going to do that whole day. Well, before we get into it, let's talk about uh, the, the top end. I, I do have to say I was a little bit lucky because I had 40% Tom, 20% Sung J, 25% Speed. So that's like 85% of my lineup. Some of them were doubled up. So about 80% of my lineups. Yeah. started with those three guys and I still got two thirds of my money back because I felt like I got everything else, right? That That's what it was. Except though. Like, those like guys. Okay. It hurt, Buckley, man, it hurt. Buckley, Kirk, Putnam, Lipsky. These are, these are four guys that we love. Like these, these, that's what I'm saying. Like spawn was up there, liked him. Uh, Connors, it was in the nine K sure. But just using some other guys, these were guys that we liked JT Poston, huge on like all them ended up in those like Steven Yeager was in the top 30. Yeah. Like all those guys we liked at the bottom. I had a bunch of M or Kim lineups that had like Buck, Buckley, Lipsky, et cetera, all within them. But you just have to have everything, man. You got to have it all. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out. Uh, so uh, anything else about this week? Should we move on? No, we do have a listener league, though, and it's literally the craziest thing oh I have ever God. seen, Kenny. Okay, first off, I got to say, Jay Moore is 811, right? Yeah. Right? Like, go ahead, Tammy. You go first because I noticed well, this, too. But go ahead. Th- this is I, – I sent it to you today. I was just blown away. It's it's. The, I've been in all kinds of listener leagues. Mayo's had them forever. Al Smizzle's done listener leagues. Like, they've been around forever. The the uh, the old three donkeys with CSU Ram Bales and Levitan, they had one. Like, I've never seen this in my life in a, in a listener league. It's a three max. This guy, Jay Morris, 811, came first, second, and third, but with three different lineups. I know he had a core of three to four guys. But I'm just saying, he still did the job. He still filled out the other two to three pieces properly to get there. It wasn't like we, I think we've seen before where someone's come like third, fourth, and fifth because they use the same lineup and just stro- and rolled it to try and shift the whole thing. This to me is way harder. You, you had to way get, harder. But you mix the pieces that were accurate too to then dummy the field 621. 621 would have won every event. Right. But, Jay but, Morris 811, please tell me you put that in the GPP. Yeah, I hope Please, so. Because you would have won every GPP out there. Was it? I, I didn't look that far. I, I, that would blow me away. Okay. In, in the $5, Drive the Green is the only one I see because it's the only GPP I play. He beat first place by 23 points. Oh, wow. That makes it that he much beat, crazier. I, I did first not dig place, that far. He beat first place in the $5, Drive the Green by 23 points. Yeah. So please, 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 God, Jesus. 
say you put that shit in the GPP lineup because winning 500 bucks or less would really fucking suck with that fucking lineup. I'll tell you that right now. I would be eating. I would be angry. I would be angry at myself because that wouldn't happen with myself because I put my listener league lineup in a GPP. That's the way I do it. So I hope he did it. So let's go over um, his um, lineup. It looks like he has a nice picture of his family. Looks mm-hmm. like uh, maybe like a grandpa or mom, dad, and him or something like that. I can't really tell, uh, but that's what it looks like. Wholesome, wholesome. Unlike this show, wholesome. All right, so two, 621 points. Okay, Corey Connors, of course, who finished in 12th place, 22% owned. J.J. Spawn finished in 12th place as well, uh, 9% owned. Cam Davis finished in 32nd. Uh, he was 22% owned. Siwoo Kim, the winner, uh, 7.5% owned. Hayden Buckley. Um, 12% owned, came in second, and he had Lipsky, 3% who came in fourth. <gasps> Hell of a lineup. <gasps> Sorry, man. I'm hiccuping and burping at the same time over here. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Uh, but uh, great lineup. Jay Morris, 811. What would you think of the lineup? I know you loved it. It was unbelievable. It's just, it's so unbelievable. I just went and looked. So it, the only thing it wouldn't have shipped that I saw is the $20. So at least he doesn't have to feel bad that he didn't put 20 bucks to win 200 K on it. But the $5, like you said, would have shipped out, right? He left 600 bucks on the table, which is fair. Good number. Right. Love the setup. You and I talk about this all the time, but he, you know, he, he did it even better than I would. I like when everyone was trying to play a nine K guy and having FOMO on like Henley, Harmon, Connors, those guys, he picked one of them, but he, he got off the FOMO of M Kim Spieth, and Decky and said one nine K three eight K, which are a range is going clearly overlooked two seven Ks, but then still managed to get away with playing the two 20% guys in Davis and Connors because of the three guys. Well, really four guys under 11% because Buckley was 11. The rest are under 10. So very solid lineup in his other lineups. You can look, he switched in like KH Lee and somebody and Nick Hardy, but went with the same setup with a nine three eights and two sevens. And then the last one, same setup, but went with Spawn and Steel. Like, just that was the thing. He came one, two, three. But, so he beat his own second place with 621 to 585. Third came, or 585.5. Third came 585. And fourth was 556. So he won like 30 more in increments of his own, even. So, anyway, shout out to Jay Morris 811. Got him into the Tournament of Champions. Reach out on Twitter at Totag and Tambo or at Kendo VT. Let us know. What happened there? Like, just uh, I'm curious if you had it anywhere else. I didn't check every other tournament, but hopefully you want some good coin with it. If not, you want some pretty good coin in our tournament because you got what seven fifty eight fifty off of fifteen bucks. That's a pretty damn good ROI, Kenny. So first uh, first listener league of the season and the craziest one we've ever seen. Yeah, it was wild. Good for you. I, I really hope you won a GVP because that was a money ass lineup. So yeah. Jay Morris eight eleven, you will be in our three man this week. Please take it easy on us. <laughs> because that's a hell of a fucking lineup. All right. Uh, let's get to, uh, I was about to go straight to the tiers. Let's go to the course is for this week. Uh, so the PGA Tour goes California, West Coast swing, getting started for the old Bob Hope Classic. Um, you know, now it's called the Amex. I still have it as the Desert Classic in my write-up, so I got to change that. Uh, and we played on three different types of courses. Uh, three different types, three different courses. It's going to be on the um, Jack Nicholas Tournament course at PGA West, one round. La Quinta Country Club, one round. And the stadium course at PGA West, Pete Dye designed uh, two rounds if the golfers make the cut. Uh, the, the, this tournament, a bit unconventional. All the golfers play each course once the first three days. Then there will be a cut on Saturday. Uh, the cut rule used to be a bit different here but uh, than most events. But this week, the cut will remain top 65 in ties. Uh, The remaining golfers will battle it out Sunday at the stadium course to find a victor. Uh, Because of this, golfers in your lineups that missed a cut will have less total effect on your DraftKings score than usual. Um, Having as many golfers as possible make the cut is still important. Uh, But you can get away with uh, missed cuts and possibly still cash, Uh, meaning you could be a little bit more aggressive uh, in picking your golfers with upside, especially for your cash lineups. You know, I've been going with that aggressive approach in cash, you know, like three above 9K, two 7K, one 6K punt. I mean, that's not going to change for this week. That's what I've been doing every week, but especially in these type of events, I think you go as aggressive as possible uh, in cash because you only got 
uh, one day uh, of, of no golf for your golfers that missed the cut. Uh, now, this event's also pro-am, all right? Uh, so the course and pin locations won't be set up too difficult, except on Sunday um, at the stadium course, the pro-am and Saturday. Uh, and they'll probably move the tee boxes back and make the pin locations a bit more challenging for the pros on Sunday. Uh, golfers are going to need patience, man. You see six-hour rounds here all the fucking time. It is annoying, not great for TV. Some guys can't handle it. Uh, you know, that's why you don't see them playing these pro amps very often. Some guys who are naturally slow, <coughs> can they tend to play well at events like these uh, because they're used to playing at a snail's pace. Uh, so uh, uh, now when you look at these courses and, and difficulty, six years ago during the first three rounds, the stadium course had a scoring average of almost 71. Uh, the Nicholas course scoring average that year was 68.9. La Quinta was 69.1. Uh, five years ago, scoring a little bit more difficult uh, because of the wind and, and, and the wet conditions. Four years ago, La Quinta played the easiest and was actually the easiest on tour. Uh, the difference between La Quinta and Nicholas that year is very minuscule, as Nicholas was the second easiest course on tour in 2018. Uh, this is something to keep in mind when playing showdown and making first-round leader bets. Uh, the first round leader coming from the stadium course will be very unlikely. Uh, so the amount of golfers to pick from is cut in third, making us the betters uh, have slightly better odds than normal first round leader bets, unless your book does first round leader bets by course. And then, you know, you just throw everything out the window. I just said uh, now, because, you know, you throw in the fact that a lot of first round leaders play in the morning wave, you can cut down the possible options even more uh, for this. So, you know, good week for first round leader type deals. Um, or like, you know, a first round leader or showdown. Uh, a couple of more tidbits, some trends. Uh, this course is known for like a lot of hole outs, like over 700 hole outs since 2012 uh, at this course. Uh, 12 of the last 13 winners here played in at least one of the two Hawaiian events prior, Hawaiian events prior to their win. Um, uh, nine of the last 10 winners played this event before. Eight of the last 11 winners uh, had a top 15 in one of their last seven starts. Let's just get to these courses. Uh, the Jack Nicholas Tournament course at PGA West, 7,200 yards, um, par 72, four par threes, four par fives, 10 par fours. All the par fives would be reachable by most golfers. Uh, the course is hosted PGA Tour Qualifying School, and there's been like 59s shot of this course. So not that difficult. Uh, this course is, um, you know, like, on la seven years ago, the 11th easiest course on tour. Five years ago, um, you know, it was uh, the, the the 11th easiest. Um, uh, you know, it was the second easiest on, in 2018. And it's always in that top 10, top 15 easiest courses on tour every single year, year in and year out. The course is play, uh, this course is played. Fairways average to large in width with many bunkers and water and play off the tee on a lot of holes. I don't think the rough is going to be that thick. Uh, because, you know, the fact that it is a pro-am, my guess is the tour officials will try to set it up a little bit easier just so we don't have like seven hour rounds, you know, just, 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 just to make it a little bit easier for these amateurs. Uh, you know, the, the greens are going to be undulating, multi-tiered and on the large side, uh, bunkers and water surrounding most greens. Uh, like the other two courses, the greens will be Bermuda grass with a stint meter rating of around 11. Uh, La Quinta, 7,000 yard par 72. Four par threes, four par fives, ten par fours. It's been regular on this rotation for years. Uh, third easiest course on tour in 2016. Second easiest in 2020 and 2021. Fairways a tree line and average at best in width. Bunkers, water, local vegetation in play. Uh, the greens are average in size with a little bit of trouble surrounding them. Now, the stadium course probably where you want to put most of your focus on. Peak die course. Uh, stadium course at PGA West is a bit more difficult of a course compared to the other two, but I wouldn't call it overly difficult. Uh, it was a 10th easiest course on tour in 2016, 20th easiest in 2017, 15th easiest in 2018, and it rarely plays outside the top 20 uh, in easiest courses on tour. Uh, like it's funny because it hosted like the Bob Hope Classic in like 87, and everybody complained about how fucking hard it was. And so they like quit it. They're like, 
We're never playing here again. Uh, no tour pro wanted to play here again uh, until 2016. They brought it back. And like, you know, now with the modern equipment and these young guys out there balling uh, this course, uh, not as difficult as it was where people were bitching about it in 2018. Uh, so 7,200 yards, four par threes, four par fives, uh, 10 par fours. The par fives are much longer and more difficult than the other two courses. Uh, that's where the scoring difference is. You're going to see uh, right there. The par fives have been some of the most difficult to reach in two on tour. Fairways average in size, but get narrow near the landing areas. The roughest light, but golfers will have to deal with bunkers and a lot of uh, water on, uh, on approaches. Uh, now, if golfers miss wildly off the tee, they're going to you know, have to avoid the water. Uh, they're going to have to deal with bunkers, uh, which are going to deal with dormant grass as well. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be a little bit less lush, and a bit more patchy. That's not like that brown, dead-looking grass you see at this event every year. Uh, it's not that difficult to hit out of, but it can be sort of patchy, and the consistency of that grass could be fluctuating. So, you know, it might make it a little bit more difficult for distance control. Uh, you know, there's going to be, um, you know, the greens are small, trouble all over the place, uh, island greens, 200-yard carries over water on par threes, like, 20 foot deep bunkers. Remember Mickelson a few years ago was in contention, hit it in that bunker on 16. It's like 20 foot deep. Couldn't get it out of there and lost his chance at the win. Uh, you know, the last three holes tough. You got a 16th hole with that bunker, 17th Island green called Alcatraz, 18th, one of the harder par fours with water involved. Uh, lots of, in all three of these courses, one thing you'll notice pretty easy. Next thing you'll notice a lot of holes from like 300, to four, 350 to 450. I think it's like over 40% of the holes are from 350 to 450, somewhere in that range. Still going to be a lot of wedges used at this event. Tambo, what are you looking for in golfers? Got to look for people that can play a putting contest. Piece of shit fucking set up putting contest week. Remember John Rom last year? So uh, funny enough, he's committed and he's back here again. We'll talk about him in a, set, a second, but you talked about it in depth, Kenny. Like a lot of it is to do with the three courses. You've got the full setup. You, you know, there's ed edges and advantages we can get from that. We'll have to wait and see with weather and things, how it all sets up by the end of the week. First look here, obviously, but just going through it, there's always some edge to be had in showdown, in first round leader betting in some cases, like you said, depending on how the book set it up or if they separate it on your book, you'll have to wait and see that. But in general, approach, birdies are better, the power five scoring across all the courses, and then some putting, right? As, as back to the original aforementioned quote there from Rom. It does come down to that for for whatever reason. I mean, it's just the way it sets up. But he also goes on to say how nice the course is and how, you know, solid it is around here. And it's a great spot to play. So I guess, you know, at the end of the day, that's why he's back. Maybe it's because of some of the comments he wants to roll back through. But a lot of good guys are here. So I think it's going to come down to more of roster construction, game theory, stuff that we always talk about as we go through. We'll take a look at it when we dive into the tiers. But for me, the stats are approach. Birdies are better. Par five scoring. And then some putting out here on the, the, these courses. Any change of the way you go about your GPP lineups with the cut being after 54 holes? I, I think you said it best. And yeah, I'm going to look at that. But I mean, two of these guys up top seems at least two of them seems very doable and probably what you should do just based on my original message at the top of the show, where it was, like I said, it's kind of, you know, what, what myself and others were calling last week is really what this week is. This is where we get a tier drop off. And it doesn't mean you're not going to use those guys. We're going to go through it for you tier by tier. I'm just saying that that's what makes more sense. And why, when you see our guy, Jay Morris, get away, not get away with it, crush with it. But I'm saying like that lineup structure that I talk about, Kenny, Corey Connors with three, eight K guys, Davis spawn and Kim, the argument becomes in that build, which it ties into your question here for what this build is, is that Cam Davis, JJ spawn and C Wu could be the same as Harmon Henley and somebody else up there. Right. And that and Mav McNeely, who by the way, also did, okay last week you're just replacing them with those three here you can't really replace Cantlay, Xander and and Will Zalatoris with guys down in the 8k like Tom Hoagie, Adam Hadwin and Wyndham Clark right could it happen because it's a putting contest and all the jokes aside I'm just saying yes it's golf but in general to me that's where my mistake was last week framing it up that way when it's not really true versus here it's totally different right we've got big names up at the top. That is a, a talking piece though, Kenny, we can get in to these tiers, but Rom down to X, you know, if you include Willie Z, what do we say? Like Willie Z, Rom, these guys in these birdie fests or putting contests, sometimes not the best plays, even though again, on paper, they look pretty damn good, but 
What are you doing here up in this upper 10K range? Xander, who, by the way, there was a tweet this week for those that don't follow us or see us retweet it and stuff. MRI was negative. Going to give it another go. So, you know, his back's fine now, he thinks. He's going to just give it another shot. Xander, up to Rom. What are you doing here in this 10K range? Finau's my favorite play. I'm playing Finau. A couple of top 15s here uh, in the past. Like I said, I, I feel big years for Rom and Finau. Rom got the win in the tournament of champions. I bet Finau 12 to 1. I should have bet him at 14 to 1 this morning, uh, but I hesitated. And then when I went back to the book, it dropped the 12s. So I'm angry about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm going with Tony. He's number one in my model. Uh, iron game strong, opportunities gained all there. Par fives, he crushes. He's excellent on these distance par fours from 350 to 400. He's 16th from 400 to 450. He's first in the last 50 rounds in this field. Give me Tony Finau as my highest own golfer uh, probably in the field. My first cash game, Cornerstone, $100 cheaper than him. It's going to be Patrick Cantlay, who loves this course, who loves California swing. Um, he's top 10 in my model again as well. Uh, lots of birdies, lots of opportunities gained. The best player on par fives in this field in the last 50 rounds. Uh, it, 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 and, and a good price. Uh, 10,100 fits very, very well at the top of your cash lineup. Uh, so I like that. I, and I'm going to play either Rom or Sheffield. Um, I'm leaning Rom because that's my guy. Uh, but if he's going to be like 25% on the chef's going to be like 13, might go chef. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's probably going to be an ownership play uh, for those two guys because they've both had success here. They're both playing excellent golf. When you look at these guys in the top three in this field, in the last 10 weeks, uh, these guys have played. Let me count these up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten events combined. They have three wins and haven't finished worse than ninth. In any of those events, those top three guys, uh, uh, Scheffler, Finau, and Rom. So it's sort of a lock that those guys are going to be top 10, you would think, right? Uh, just because of the way they've been playing and the way that they've been going. So, you know, it's a pick them for me for Scheffler and Rom. And I'll, I'll pick that based on ownership uh, when it comes down to it on Wednesday. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to siphon them through. I think I talked earlier on it, but like the RBC Canadian Open, it was a prime example with Rory, JT, and Finau being three, three of the best guys in that field. You bet you couldn't fit them all. You had to siphon through them and have a, whatever combination of two, which ended up being Rory, and I believe it was Rory and JT because it was Rory and JT the last hole. But Finau, scoring-wise, went off. And, I mean, you got Finau here again, who you talked about. Cantlay, Pro-Am and all, surprisingly enough, has still been able to battle his way through. Obviously, California kid, all that stuff. But in general, he looks pretty good, too. So those two guys, Rom, Scheffler, Xander is the one I'd have the trouble with. Again, just I played him last time. But then my say, my whole point last time, when I tried to tell people, I want to repeat it again, because maybe they didn't listen last time, maybe they didn't get it. You'd think, like, okay, then why don't you just go right back to him here? And we'll see by the time Wednesday kicks around. But I have to see more. But I played him saying we don't really know what's going on with his back. We can only go off of the, the knowledge that the Twitter and stuff like that is putting out there. And what Twitter had put out about Xander was that he played with it a month ago when he managed to shoot three rounds in the sixties and finish fourth in Bahamas at the hero. That to me was enough to say, I'll take the risk. Maybe it's just the same situation. It, it doesn't tweak and he's good. Once it tweaked on him enough to cancel out and have to go get an MRI and all that, I think for me, is a different scenario because now we have further news. We've got updated news. Now it says it's negative. But again, the other thing is, what do you have around them? You've got Finau, Cantlay, Sungjae, Willie Z. We'll get into this next range in a second because got got both those guys, Sungjae and Tom Kim, coming off the miscut at huge ownership. So right now, Kenny, Rom, Finau, Cantlay is what stands out, the three up top. Rom, obviously winning here in the past, coming off the win, wanting to go back to back. I mean, he's definitely capable of getting the job done here. So we, we can go back to him, no problem. Can Sheffler? we see a sub 15% Scotty Scheffler this week? It's definitely possible, but I think it still gets spread out, man. People are just going to play these guys up mm. top. I know there's going to be like Harmon, Siwoo, Hadwin type favorites based on course history when we do get down there, but that doesn't, those guys don't force you to get off any of these guys at the top. You can still play these guys up here with one of them. I, I mean, look at your cash game quarter zones. You're going to get to them, but you, you can easily play three guys up above this, this range. So I don't know. Good segue. Those are my three main up top that we can go into this nine K range. Cam, sorry, Aaron wise all the way up to Sung Jay. Kenny, what do you got? Yeah, I got two other cash game cornerstones here. Again, I'm going aggressive three studs 
Get me three studs in my cash lineup. Three guys who are going to birdie it out all fucking day. First one's Canley. Second one's going to be Willie Z. It looks like he's healthy. Uh, he played well at the Tournament of Champions. Uh, I'm not worried about his injury anymore. Uh, the guy can, you know, can go lights out, can go low. His iron game's exceptionally strong. And the thing is, even if he does doesn't get as low as I'd like him to go. I think he still makes a cut, uh, you know, and still is in the middle. It's still nice and play gets my four rounds. So I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that with Cantlay. And I'm not worried about that with my third pick either. Uh, now I say that and I'm sure one of them is going to miss the cut now because I just fucking said all that shit. But my third cash game cornerstone is going to be Cam Young at $9,100. If, if I could fit, Cantley, Zalatoris, and Young in a lineup with only one 6K guy in my cash lineup and a 6K guy who I trust. I mean, that's that that's upside to upside. You know what I'm saying? Give, give me that. Give me that all day. I mean, Cam Young, okay, stats aren't going aren't gonna to be uh, the best in this field, but it's him, you know? He's top five in birdies a better game. So the birdies a better game in the last 50 rounds. Cantley is third. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, Cantlay is third. Um, Will Zaltoris is second. Cam Young is fourth. This is a pretty fest. Give me these guys. Uh, again, uh, Cam Young, uh, another thing, really good on the 350 to 400-yard par fours. You're going to see about uh, 20% of the holes right around there uh, in that area. You know, so, so give me those three guys to start my cash lineup with all the upside in the world. Now, if I'm going GPPs, I could go back to see Wu, man. Uh, the dude, the dude plays very streaky golf. We've seen it in the past. Now he's gotten better. He's a bit more consistent now. But the way he was talking last week after his win about how confidence and consistency, that's what he needs. Confidence and consistency. And consistency is getting there. He's making a shit ton more cuts now than he's ever had in his career. The confidence has to be there after winning the week before. Give me some Siwoo this week. Tambo. Yeah, uh, I was with you there. I, I was following along till the end, but Siwoo, obviously, that was the, the other thing about yesterday, Kenny, when the chip goes in, that was the feeling I was having based on the Amex coming up where he just won in 2021 here. Of course, Siwoo's going to ship this thing the week before we go to the Amex where he's won before. So going back to this range, I was just going to say, I was thinking out loud here just, but these guys like, you know, Sungjae up top, definitely going back 11th, 12th, 10th, and 12th here. I, I got no problem on the flop leg, just going back to him in this spot. Sam Burns, a guy that I like here that again, when you've got M, Zalatoris, Tom Kim, who people go back all these spots, I'm going to go to Sam Burns. I like the upside getting three full days of scoring from him. Cam Young, I think has to be the most underpriced in the field, just based yeah. on what it is. Like even what he played last time, he missed like eight, four footers. It felt like maybe it was only four, four, eight footers. I don't know. It was bad for the putts that he was missing though. So I can tell you that much at 9,100, he'll be popular, but for good reason. And you can get different in different spots. We just saw it with our guy, even going back to Jay Morris for the last time here, but just like 22% Connors, 22% Cam Davis. You don't have to fade Cam Davis just because he's going to be popular. So Cam Young in this case could be the new Cam this week that you go back to that's got the ownership and just stick with it. And then, you know, Kenny, this guy falls at 8,900. So I'm going to lead into the next range, but I I'm going to break this guy on purpose by playing him here. I don't care if I break him or not, but I just, I'm done fading Taylor Montgomery. It's not just the putter. Like this guy just insanely good. He scores so well. I really don't care anymore at 8,900 bucks. It's a fair price for what he does out there. And he's not going to make every putt and I don't expect him to, but he does everything, man. He still scores DraftKings points. That's the game we play. So I'm going to go to this guy and if it breaks him and he, he fails because I finally hop on board because I haven't been playing him as much lately with the ownership and the putting and all that. But we've talked about this countless times on this show. What's it again? 12, 15, 10, three of his last four. He just continues to do it. And I know the field's stronger this week, but you just, you just talked about getting Cantlay, Zalatoris and Young. Why can't I just play Cantlay, Young, Montgomery? Like I'll skip Zal and that's okay. Like example. I'm just saying, I got no problem doing it. And I, again, it's just little things like that, that I'm still going to be able to do it. So I'll start there. Definitely like him. This is a range. I don't think I'll get as much of Kenny, just because what, what really? we talked about. The AK that? range. Well, it, I can see again, you know, what I do is I shift my I build. Love this so range. That's why I'm saying, I love it. 
I will have builds that land in here, but I'm saying I could also see totally where this becomes a landmine because this is all the guys we want to play, right? I just talked about Montgomery. You got Cam Davis, all the par fives, Putnam coming off a good week. The Gala, I bet him obviously looks good. KH Lee played well last week. Hadwin, the history, not who I'm playing, just talking through them guys. Adam Hadwin, the history is solid. Uh, Wyndham Clark, a lot of people bet him and JT Poston played good last week. But again, Kenny, the field strength, the price, et cetera, all of that leads to, like you said, what's wrong with your build with the three 9K guys and above and just skipping this range where everybody's going to have a favorite in this range. So for me, I'll let you go in a second, but Taylor Montgomery, Cam Davis, Thigala, and then probably Lee and Poston, maybe Wyndham. I, I, I like four or five of those guys, though, for the scoring and the upside with all the par fives, three days of full play, all of that. But talk to me about this AK range. Give me your thoughts. Yeah, give me Montgomery and Davis. This is probably why I only said one person for GBP play in the 9K range uh, because I'm going to play at probably three guys up top in a 10K. Uh, I got to play my two cash and cornerstones in a 9K, and then I play Siwoo because I want to play Montgomery. I'm just saying, you, you went over them. I, I'm done fading Taylor Montgomery. I'm on the bandwagon, full steam ahead. Let's go. He's going to win something at some point in time. Uh, I was thinking about betting him 35 to 1, probably not the best number. So I said no. Uh, so I went with KH Lee instead at 65 to 1. Uh, I thought that was a great number for KH Lee. Uh, you know, a guy who, you know, has won twice, uh, has been playing good golf. Both weeks he's been on, he's got to be, you know, feeling some kind of rhythm uh, playing his third week in a row. Uh, I like KH at, at 8,300. I like um, um, posting a lot. Again, another short type course. Uh, he, sh- he showed up last weekend. He's been playing sneakily, sneakily, really, really well. Um, Hollywood Hoagie, you know, he was my fade of the week last week at $8,500. I don't know how popular he's going to be because he did not finish very well. I don't think, Um, you know, not at least not up to his price at $9,800 last week. I know he didn't finish that highly. No, he finished Uh, 41st. Okay. So yeah. So, you know, are people going to jump off and jump back on him? The numbers are there. Um, Yeah. I mean, I really like this AK range a lot. If I had to pick my favorite play, it would probably be Montgomery, but outside of him, you know, there's a lot of people in play. I think that's what I'm saying. Again, first look, I don't want to commit to it yet. All my stuff will be final. Run Pure Sports Wednesday premium show. I'll be on with Pat. I'll have a better idea of you guys right on this network, Mail Media Network channel here. You can watch the show we record Wednesday morning in studio. I have a way more, uh, you know, cl- a way closer idea to what I'm actually doing. But what I, what you said there, Kenny, your exact line that you, you landed with at the end is there's a lot of guys that you like in here. That's what I think everyone's going to feel like. And like I said, if I think Cam Young is underpriced, and I like a guy like Montgomery at the top. I don't think Cam Young Montgomery's starting point is good. And you talked about being able to play Cantlay, Zalatoris, Young as your third guy in. What if I make Young my second and pair up whether it's Cantlay, Finau, Rob with those two and then jump this 8K range? I think for some, some at least some of my builds, that's going to be a way I go where I just get, that's how you're getting different because you're right. The, the range is very solid. Name wise, paper results, course history. Uh, really, it's event history because you're playing at the same event. But uh, I mean, like the, the courses are different, the rotation. But I'm just saying in general, well, it's I been can the same see- rotation since 2016. So for most of these guys, it's basically the same. Yeah, uh, it's the I, same. There, there was that one year where it was cut to two courses. I think for yeah. COVID, right? I think that was the year again. That's what I there's what I was trying to get at. Those I think that was the years people did like crazy numbers and stats where it was like, well, he actually gained all his numbers on the the La Quinta course and so on and so on. But so you try to figure it out backwards and it's like, yeah, that makes it a little bit tough. But in general, you get what I'm saying. There's a lot to say good about this 8K range. So I got no problem when you've got three full days of golf locked in, just going over it. And and there is FOMO, but just getting off of some of these guys. And really I'm classifying Montgomery and Davis in that 9K range and just calling it sort of Davis and up. Three guys, I think is a good build. And then you hope you get the RBC Canadian open style finish where you've got the big dogs up top and you've got the the combos of the right version of them. So that's going to do it for the 8K range. Kenny, take us into this 7K range. We got Jason Day. Go down as low as you want, really, and then let me know. I really like Denny. Again, putting, if it's a putting contest, give me Denny. Like sub 8K Denny, I'm in like all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's like the 8-9 Denny, the 9-3 Denny. I'm like, no, can't do that. Can't do it. 7-8 Denny? 
Give me some seven, eight Denny. Uh, you know, again, it's all about the putter form. And you see, you see flashes of decent ball striking from him on occasion. Hopefully it happens and he makes enough putts. Uh, you know, I got no problem with Denny at $7,800. I'll go back to uh, Dietrich. Um, end of the season, really, really strong. Three, three straight top 15s played, I think, one event uh, in the Euro Tour I don't, or in the fall. Um, I don't remember which one. It wasn't that great of a finish, but he's coming back. Could be a little bit r- rusty, but you're seeing him at um, – at a you know a, a good cheap cheaper price, uh, it could be worth the risk. So I you know I like the way he played towards the end of the last year. Uh, he's always been a solid birdie maker. So yeah, I, I'll go with him. Um, Alex Smalley, somebody who missed the cut last week who hurt some people. Uh, I, he has good. He played well here last year, and his numbers once again they seem to line up with a strong iron game, strong tee to green opportunities gained really up there. Lots of birdies. Uh, really good on shorter par fours. Uh, you know, I could go with a little bit of Alex Smalley. Why don't you go up top here, Tambo? Yeah, I'm glad you said him. I didn't see anyone really on Twitter today talking about him, bet him, anything like that. I really like going back to the well on Smalley at 7,500. We liked him last week. Again, that's one of the other things I noticed too, Kenny, like Poston and Siwoo played good last week. Poston and Siwoo have won the Wyndham at, at Sedgefield. And now this week where Poston has decent history, talk about him too a, li- a little bit ago, where Siwoo's won before. Like, it's kind of like they're setting up for similar style courses. And, you know, that's why if we liked Smalley last week on that course, you pit, fitting him in with some of those names, I can see going back to him. No problem here at all. So going 7,500 up. I like him. Uh, Grillo harder to give a pass to, but he does pop for me a little, uh, a couple guys, Joel Damon. I saw a lot of people bet him. I missed the big betting number. I think people got him at like 90 this morning. He was on my book at like 50 or 55. That tells you maybe a good thing, but I I didn't want to bet him at that number. I would have liked him at the double number much better, 90 or hundred. I saw people out there with him. Keith Mitchell, Denny McCarthy, who you talked about. That's really it for this upper range for me. Only those four or five guys are the ones that stand out for me. So I'll I'll go into this next range and just keep it rolling because, uh, you know, a couple of guys stood out to me. I was trying to look at the history too, to see it. I think Smalley, by the way, just quick note on him, actually came 25th here last year as well. And kind of like Dietrich, uh, who you mentioned, had like three really good finishes before the, the bad recent finish. So uh, other guys here, Steven Yeager, Lipsky, just sticking with these guys the entire run, Kenny, at these prices. I don't care, especially with three days of scoring, all the opportunities that they get. I'm sticking with them. It feels a little chasey on Lipsky, but I actually don't think so. He was playing good golf before the injury. Came back from it, healthy now, looks good, really solid last week. Just didn't do enough down the stretch, but he still got a really nice paycheck. Got to be feeling good about that coming into this week. Some good momentum rolling in. Jagger, I'm going to continue playing this guy. Talked a lot about him last week. You tweeted it out, a list. Crazy, 7,200. I mean, again, 11th the last time we saw him, which was, I believe, the TOC. It wasn't anything crazy, but, you know, go back to here. 22nd, 21st, the last two years. I think you got him at 200 to 1. Yeah, so, 200 like, to 1 this morning. That's a good play. Sig, I'm sticking with Sig. I like him. I always like a little Matthew Neesmith. Benny on flashed some, some stuff last week. And then not much after that, maybe Ben Taylor, Nick Taylor, the, the two Taylors there, but not really. The ones I said are the guys I mainly like. Who do you like in this lower 7K range? Well, Gord's probably my favorite at $7,400. I think he's going to win soon. I think he's that talented. He just makes so many birdies. And when his iron game is hot, you saw it some this past weekend. Uh, when his iron game gets hot, it can get real hot. Uh, you know, the, the guy was playing well. He makes a ton of birdies. Give me Will Gordon. Uh, I do like him. I think I got him at 80 to one. I'll have to double check my card. Uh, but yeah, he, he's going to be on my card for a while because I think he's going to win soon. Uh, I like him a lot. I was, he's, he's in my cash lineup as of now as well, even though he's not a cornerstone, uh, you know, I'll just say right there. So there you go. Uh, Lee Hodges, pretty good finish here last year. Approach game is his strength. Really good from 400 to 450 yard par fours. We're going to see again around 20% of all par fours from that range. Uh, so give me a little bit of Lee Hodges. I like your moves. Uh, Steven moves like Jaeger. Uh, I, I like him uh, this week. Jaeger uh, bombs, Griff- Kenny. Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. I've had some really crazy nights with Jaeger bombs before. <laughs> like, I don't understand like how it tastes that delicious because like when you drink Jaeger, right? It just tastes like nasty ass black licorice, like syrupy, sweet black licorice crap, right? But you pour some motherfucking Red Bull in that shit 
and it becomes like the most delicious thing you could possibly taste. And like you could easily chug like 18 of those in like an hour and a half, which I've done before. And I don't, I just don't understand like how that came to be because, you know, I'll drink Jaeger back in the day in my college days, because everyone's drank Jaeger. It was just what to do. They had it on the little frozen tap machine and shit uh, at the bar. Uh, But then like, uh, whoever makes it is a genius because it's so delicious. I do remember that night, like I couldn't sleep and I was so hung over and I was so jittery, uh, but I was drunk and jittery. It's like the worst like buzz you could possibly ever have. I don't know why people drink. Uh, I don't do it. Any, I don't know why people mix Red Bull and, and, and alcohol uh, that's, you know, not in their twenties, but <laughs> all right, I'm going off. The rails Red Sorry Bull about is common. Yeah. What about, yeah. uh, do you ever have Zambuca? I like Sambuca. Yeah. With Red Bull? No. I mean, you were talking oh, black, oh, like, oh, it takes taste like oh. black licorice. I was say, okay. like, they light it on fire. You have the shot. Yeah, no, I, for some Sambuca. reason, I like Sambuca, though. Yeah. I, I, I mean, really, I do like Jaeger, too. I, but I mean, it's just, but the, I don't know. I don't like the taste. I just like Jaeger. Is that weird? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I like, like what Jaeger does to me. How about that? Uh, I, that, I, that I, I like that. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Um, where the hell were we? That lower 7k range we were talking luke list, luke list. Luke list. yeah luke list again i was a fan of that uh other than that i'm good to go why don't you go into this 6k range tambo yeah one more guy i want to mention actually i forgot about him two guys actually i think i just want to pull something up on one of them but mean dean our guy dean Oakland? yeah yeah mean dean oakland <laughs> <laughs> with my boy big t we always talk about a mean dean and that's what he says seventh and fifth in two of his last three events coming in and just Wait, it's a golfer. Dean Burmeister is a golfer. Yes. No, I, I call him mean D. Dean Burmeister. We're talking oh, about okay, okay. 7,400 bucks. I love your Gordon. I, like, I would have known if there was a golfer named mean D. No, you got to put nicknames on him though. And then what, what about SH Kim? Because pretty solid last week, actually. Yeah. And he's got, he's got a all around, but he, he does have a short game too. Right. So if he does no, have short games, like his short games, like his strength. Yeah, so I, I think it could be a, a good thing here. I, I don't know. I, I just have a feeling on him as well. So, I mean, it's a couple more. I probably list eight or nine guys in there. But in general, that's kind of what I'm seeing up front right now. Going into this 6K range, Kenny, Carl Juan, the guy was going off last week. I'm not sure if you followed him much throughout, but I played him in showdown, and he came through quite a bit. Ended up finishing 21st. It's a 21st, 39th, 35th, his last three now. So definitely don't think there's anything wrong with going back to a guy like him here. At this price tag, it just seems fair for what we saw last week. You talked about some other guys where their price didn't really change much. He's right there in that mix. Um, you know, our guy Sam Ryder let, lets us down always, but always go back to him a little bit. Oh man, this range is tough for me though. The the one thing I will say too, Adam Shank. I'm not sure if you saw this thing last week. It was the our boy Joe Joe Iadon Idoni Iadon. Our boy anyway. He he showed this at, at Tour Picks. Great dude on Twitter. He posted the graphic. And I know there was some outrage to it because like, well, obviously Sung Jay leads in birdies. He played so many events, but it was the birdie makers and uh-huh. Sung Jay was up by like 300. Even if they did birdies per event, I'm sure he would work out quite well for you. But Adam Shank is one of those dudes too. And when you get a course like this at a $6,600 price tag, uh-huh. you can definitely take a shot on that. And it's not really that bad of a thing. Like you said, you can be aggressive. You get three full days. The par fives are out there. The scoring is out there. I actually think he makes quite a bit of sense down here at that price tag versus like last week you were looking for cut makers in Ryan armor and Brian Stewart and those guys here. You just want scorers. So I really like him. Ben Martin pops for me, not on the numbers, but on some of the correlation courses. And then um, the history he's got here is good too. So Ben Martin, Adam Shank, and then Andrew Novak, one more guy I'll give. He had a bogey free five under on Sunday, had really good stats on Saturday. So two solid days of ball striking to end the week. I think that can set up well for here with three full days where he can go even lower. Uh, I think those are all good plays there. I'm not going to play this guy, but Caleb, Sur- Caleb Surratt, I think is how you say it. Caleb Surratt. This guy is man, incredible amateur. I was watching him in the U S am, you know, it's a, it's heads up down the stretch, like the finals, you can go back and watch it on YouTube, but it was incredible. I think it was Bandon dunes. It's crazy track. He looked like he was dead. He ended up losing spoiler alert, sorry, but he ended up losing, but it's well worth the watch because it was such a battle 
down the stretch and he had to go on a run of like six or seven holes in a row that he just needed to have. And he got all of them and he actually made it interesting down the stretch. So someone to watch for the future, 6,000 even, but just not a great 6k range, Kenny. So it ties back into what I said, as much as you love the 8k, it's almost going to be a situation like where you have to go pick a guy up top that you just want to ride with to win, play those 8k guys and still almost land in the sevens is what it looks like at first glance. Go ahead in the 6k range thoughts on the roster construction as well. Hey, I'll, I'll, um, call on. I'm a fan. Kevin, you, I'm a fan. Uh, he played decent last week. Uh, I like my favorite probably play down here is probably Justin Lower. Uh, he had a couple of good spike tournaments, uh, you know, in the fall. He's coming in here. He plays really well on shorter par fours. I mean, he, he's fifth from 350 to 400 uh, and um, 40th from 400 to 450 in this field in the last 50 rounds. Really good wedge game. You're going to use a lot of wedges here. I like Justin Lower. Probably my favorite GPP play in the 6K range. But my final cash game cornerstone is going to be Ben Martin at $6,500. Again, similar type setup as last week where it's a shorter course, uh, not too long, a lot of wedge play. He has good course history here. I think you said he's made like four of his last five. Uh, He's made, I don't know, like – 10 of his last 15, 10 of his last 14 cuts uh, on the tour and Corn Ferry, uh, you know, the guy's the cut maker. I can get him at $6,500. So my cash game cornerstones uh, this week. And again, I, I want that I, as a punt play. I know I could go a little bit more aggressive, but the guy showed up last week and had a ton of birdies as well. Uh, and if it comes down to it and I need that fourth round, I know it's sort of weird. I'd rather take my aggressive stance with like a Will Gordon uh, and a um, uh, and a uh, who was the other seven seventy three hundred guy that I'm going to play. Uh, possibly Lipsky, Will Gordon, Lee Hodges, uh, some of those guys who I think can have a lot of upside in that low seven K range. Who I think have more upside than Ben Martin would have, and let Ben Martin just do his thing or your six K punt just do its thing, make its cut, because it's tough trying to figure out one that might top 10, though I do like lower. I just couldn't fit him in. Um, <laughs> now, so, uh, yeah, Ben Warren, once again, cash game cornerstones for the week. They're going to be Patrick Cantlay, 10,100. Will Zalatoris, 9,600. Uh, Cam Young, 9,100. And uh, Ben Martin, 6,500. I think that leaves you like 14.7 to fill out the rest of your lineup. Anybody else, Tampa? I just want to talk about this guy for one second. It's kind of a bit, but just in general. T- Taiga? Taiga? Taiga. Semi Kawa. Semi is half. So this is half Morikawa, half Tiger Woods. Is what I see this as. <laughs> Do you think you can just roll this guy continuously? Like he was all right last week. He and- was all right. Yeah. Yeah. You I've know, actually, our, our, like, our I've actually Skyler, heard people like talk. It might have been Skyler. Guy Hope DFS yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, he had him at 300 to one with the each ways. He had the top 10s, top 20s. It did not come through. I should say he failed on the weekend. But when you got a name like that alone, like, and you play that good elsewhere, he's got to be a guy that we can continue just to roll the dice on, right? I mean, that name is great. But I mean, another good name, uh, I, I sort of like, I, I, I thought his name, okay, this is what sounds going to sound really, really racist. But <laughs> for the longest time, for some reason, every time I saw his name, I saw it as Nacho Echeverria. So I just called him Nacho for like the whole time. It's, his name it, is it, Nicholas. Nicholas, I know. But he had a really strong weekend last weekend coming in, $6,200. Uh, what are you, I, he was up to like 11 or 12 under at one point in time on Sunday. I don't know if he finished there, uh, but he was there on a Sunday at $6,200. You could do worse. You know what it just made me think of, though? Uh, and it's funny, they actually both finished 12th. I was going to say, if you're going to play an Eck, like Eck of area, why don't you just play Eck Grote or Eck Goat, Austin? He had a great week last week, and he's only 6,700 in this field as well. So we're coming up with some 6K guys we can play. I, I don't want to, like I said, necessarily force these guys in, but like, you know, Ryder has a decent course history here, but no upside. 49th, 47th, 40th, 50th. That's how that looks. Stewie Sink, 21st last week. Like, I, I just can't see very many of these guys. So maybe I'll pick six or seven of them and fit them in and see what the builds look like, Kenny. But in general, I think that's it for this week, man. I got nothing else. All right. Bets. You go ahead. All right. I got Finau 12 to one. 
Cam Young, 22 to one. I had it at 28 to one this morning, but I hesitated. And I was like, ah, I got to do more research. And then I had to work for 10 hours and I came back and it was 22, but I still bet him. Uh, Cam Young, 22 to one. Uh, Will Gordon, 80 to one. Um, Adam Hadwin, 70 to one. K.H. Lee, 65 to one. Steven Yeager, 150 to one. Luke List, 200 to one. God, I'll be so sad if I miss the Jaeger win, but I don't think it's here. We'll see. That could be my famous last words. I got five. I'm with you on Cam Young. My book never had a 28, so I got the 22 on him. I got the Putnam at 50 to one. All these I went with the top eight each way on, but Putnam is 14th, 21st, 10th, 34th, 17th here the last five years and got fourth this previous week. So I love that. The Gala, 55 at a T8 each way. Love that bet. Smalley, I said it earlier, I can only get him at 90. Others got a bigger number, but 90 with the top eight. And then Lipsky with the 100. Man, I probably should have just went Jaeger, but I, I got I could add one more. I can definitely add Jaeger. I just don't know if he's the guy just yet. So uh, I'm going to go with those five for now. Likely add more, maybe talk on the, the Wednesday show with Mayo, but that's what I got for this week. Last week, Kenny, one and done. I went Henley and I went Tom Kim in my two entries. And then Mayo and I have an entry we did together, did Hideki. So failure all around. What what did you do last week? How did you end up? I went Hanley. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he was he wasn't great. I mean, but at least he didn't miss the cut. Forty one uh, players. Yeah. That is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Was, Who cares? He, like, he where are you money. saving Henley for? Is my yeah. thoughts. Yeah, I know it's not good how it worked out, but why not use him? I mean, I'm I'm going Taylor Montgomery or Siwoo Kim this week. Yeah, I don't know. I I haven't decided. I was thinking Cam Young, but we'll update it by Wednesday. I think I'm going to go Cam Young though. Cause he's another guy. You could save him for the majors. You can do whatever. I think he's playing really well. I, I like I said, it was a 13th. It wasn't anything to write home about, but he was four at least four, four foot putts. I, I know for a fact, just talking with friends and going back and forth on it. He was right there. We're getting some scoring opportunities. His wife calls him big daddy for a reason. He, he's going out. You probably saw that last year when he was the dad rolling down the street. So big, big daddy's going to come through. I think Cam Young, this week, bet him, use him in one and done. I, I like Cam Young quite a bit. All right, that sounds good. You can find me on Twitter at KendoVT. You can find my article on GupsCorner.com. You can uh, use promo code Kenny, save yourself 30% on a membership to Gups Corner. Uh, I'll have my uh, second write-up on Wednesday with, like, you know, any changes to the betting card, my fade of the week, my favorite GPP plays, all that good stuff. Go check out Gups Corner Tambo. Yeah, find me on Twitter at Toe Tag and Tambo. Definitely add me up there. The tidbits are back. Last week, shout out to PGA Tout, John. Incredible dude. He had uh, Sibu Kim in his spotlight. I always feature that one. I think it's the best article out there for the at least the starting of the week. I mean, it's one of the best articles there is that you can get up to date on what's going on in the tournament, past history, some spotlight stats, models, things like that that he does. Uh, great follow on Twitter at PGA Tout. He had Sibu Kim. I forget who else. I apologize. We have to go back. But Buckley was in there, was another good pick. Like a lot of the leaderboard was in there. It was only 20 guys out of the 146 or 44, or whatever it was last week in the tidbits. And there was the winner in the second place down the stretch. So definitely a good spot to follow at Toe Tag and Tambo on Twitter. You'll get those every week on Wednesday. Go to rumpiersports.com where you can find all my premium stuff, core plays, articles, everything we've got up over there. The premium video that comes out on Wednesday is myself, Hoop and Big T. You can use... Anything you want. No, there's no promo code right now, but you can just hit me up on Twitter and send me a DM. We'll get you a discount. All sports, one price. That's it for this week, Kenny. That's all I got. All right. So Jaeger bombs are delicious. And let's win some motherfucking money. DJ Nation. I've been getting dirty money, Jordan.